scores of residents of Mako called the biggest floating slum in Lagos on Wednesday protested the proposed development of the community by the Lagos State Government. The residents who gathered at the Yaba Local Government Development Council area, LCDA, on Wednesday expressed their displeasure at the proposed development. The protesters holding different placards expressed their disapproval of the plan. The community was formally informed at the stakeholders' engagement at the Yaba LCDA on Wednesday. Addressing the community representatives, Omiya Lake Kayode, the chairman of the Yaba LCDA, said that plans to develop Makoko have been signed by the state governor and there is no going back. The Commissioner for Waterfront Infrastructure Development, Kabiru Ahmed, who was also at the meeting, assured the community that no one will be left behind by the government, but that everyone must be on the same page. And joining us via Zoom to shed more light on this is Victoria Ibeze Moheri, Executive Director, Spaces for Change. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. The Makoko community has existed for many years. It's gained a lot of publicity also as a floating slum. Why does the government see the need to evict them at this time? Yeah, the question about Makoko um, is being like um, a sore wound that has refused to heal for many years. This is not a new conversation uh, at all. Um, for the purpose of those who don't know where Makoko is, it's located on the southeast of Lagos mainland area where it overlooks the Lagos Lagoon and the um, Todd mainland bridge. Um, the residents live in poor housing conditions, in timber homes, in shacks um, that are either built on planks or cardboard or polythene materials. Uh, you see those houses on stilts over swampy land and littered with a lot of refuse. Um, other critical problems they face in Makoko include the lack of open space, um, poor management of flood channels, and substandard housing. So given the severe lack of basic infrastructure and services um, in Makoko, um, that community is officially listed as one of the most blighted settlements in Lagos. Um, as with other comparably poor communities in the Lagos metropolis, Makoko has witnessed in the past and is still threatened in the future till date with first evictions that are ostensibly conducted under the banner of urban renewal. Um, so the problem with Makoko is that it represents the, um, the inequalities that are entrenched in the processes of socioeconomic development in the state the processes of infrastructural and wealth well distribution, the governance and power relations. I think the lopsided power relations between citizens and the state, and also class-based um, social discrimination. The poor state of infrastructure also situates Makoko within the context of massive urban deprivations, facing the majority of urban poor populations in terms of survival, housing, economic infrastructure, and participation in governance, and including access to land. And again, there's also the problem of insecurity of tenure, because the people have lived there for many years, and under our laws, having stayed on a particular land, enjoyed quiet and exclusive possession without any other person claiming adverse ownership, then that gives you some sort of level of security. But that is absent in Mafuku. Mafuku also raises a third problem of how international development work is being um, exploited and hijacked to exacerbate the already substandard living condition in the slum communities. So um, this is one of the, because of the situation there, it creates um, an excuse for governments to want to intervene to um, solve the problem of um, lack and want and massive deprivations in the community. But there are so many reasons that make the community not to believe some of these premises. You did mention that the government is planning to make it a floating storm and make it more attractive for yeah. tourism and other um, reasons that they put forward. I would just want to remind that there have been governmental commitments in the past to improve standard of living in the community. Um, um, I think that was in 2004 or um, thereabouts, the um, Lagos State Government introduced the Lagos Metropolitan and Governance Project that was then 
um, implemented by a loan for, with the World Bank over a $200 million facility. The project promised to signal the beginning of profound transformation of microcoastal socioeconomic economic um, um, geographical and environmental landscape. Instead, the mode of implementation of that project justified the perception that the project was a means for using the state apparatus to tear down the homes of the poor under the guise of urban development. So apart from the part that the government has always used forced eviction as a preferred tool of urban engineering and development control, of course, with our counter development, um, counterproductive outcomes, these evictions are generally planned and carried out without regard for due process of law and without the participation of communities. All right. So I'm, I'm, these I'm, are some of the concerning developments yeah. that have been um, emerging out of Mexico. Yeah, I think you already started on that point, but I'm going to let you, you know, go on with it. You know, just like Morocco, um, um, uh, Tedio Show Markets, Takwa Bay, you know, if you remember, their poor residents were also evicted and pricey structures were put on these spaces with no compensation, you know, to the former residents and oftentimes unaffordable to former occupants. Um, do you th think that's the same way that this would play out? And, and what is your take on, on, on that in the first place? Well, um, uh, the, 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 the antecedents, you look at the precedents that have been set to draw a conclusion. Um, July 14, 1990, um, Marocco community yeah. was demolished and over 300,000 residents displaced. And the reason advanced for the demolition of Morocco was to improve the environmental conditions to prevent flooding and to make the place more habitable for the residents. Today, Morocco has been renamed as Lake Peninsula. And um, as you can see, it is now an area that is unaffordable beyond the reach of their former owners. Moving away from Morocco, we move to another community, um, um, like Otodobamel, which was last year, um, um, two years ago, actually, um, demolished and the owners displaced. Right around the corridors where those people were moved from, we have Periwinkle residences, and not that very luxurious um, 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 estate, imagine on the land, that are also beyond, extremely and far beyond the reach of former owners. Then we also look at, in 2005, there's a Temidiri portion of Makoko that was also demolished, and there's the luxury estate also um, have now the conflict that is now that have sprouted up on the land, and the former owners can only just, from a distance, admire those buildings. They do not have the, any, the resources to live in those environments. So taking all of the traditions and all of the past experiences, seeing what has happened to communities that have been displaced with the promise of improving it, and seeing how it's been taken over uh, by newer, more um, affluent owners, then that creates um, room for, um, that means that the fears of the communities are well-founded. They are looking at past experience to inform their current fears that the new development plans may not be to their benefit. I, I would like to also know why why is it you know difficult you know for the government to understand that slums are part of the realities of um, you know communities. Yes, um, the proliferation of slums is not unconnected with the um, lack of access to land and housing. Rental values in the states keep rising. Property values also keep rising, and there are fewer or no mechanisms for that enable those who have little or no income to have access to housing. So for them, the solution is to look for spaces, informal spaces and communities where they can just find anything that is just like the roof above their heads, because shelter is a basic human necessity you can do without. So one way to um, help the communities is by providing incentives, improving security of tenure, providing mortgage systems, and also social housing. We need policies that uh, encourage, you know, that, that obligate government to provide housing for at least certain sections of the populations that can never be able to um, uh, afford housing on their own. 
that is one way to keep people from the streets. Devolutions have constantly been um, counterproductive. There has never been any record where people removed from any slum moved to former neighborhoods. What I mean is that there has never been a history from Morocco to Makoko to Ibadia to Ilubirin to Todobame. There has never been any record of anybody moved from that co community that relocated to Banana Island or VGC or Ikoyu or all the other formal areas of the city. What they have done is to go to other parts to recreate the kind of environment where they lived. So when you demolish slum communities, you have simply relocated the people to another slum, or you have relocated the problem to another destination. The problem persists. So what is now needed are uh, what is now needed um, are permanent solutions to the problem of slum proliferation in the city of Lagos, and that problem cannot be solved without addressing the question of inadequate housing and lack of access to land. All right, and, and you know, some people might also argue that um, places like, or slums like Makoko pose an environmental uh, threat to the society. Do you agree with that? Environmental threats um, happen, um, environmental blights happen as a result of some dereliction of duty. Anywhere can become a slum if you do not provide access to sanitation services, for instance, if you do not provide access to infrastructure, recreational facilities, um, water, and the, um, um, clean up, um, constant cleanup of the environment. Anywhere that is deprived of these basic infrastructure and necessities automatically transforms into a slum. So when you say that Makoko is an, um, constitutes a blight on the city, the question is, did Loma come every week to Makoko to clear the refuse? Did um, the environmental agencies build drainages in Makoko? Did the, the Ministry of Housing make efforts to make housing available for the people in Makoko. So if these duties have not been performed, then there is no corresponding obligation to make that for those areas to, um, to automatically renew by themselves without the government playing its own part. So when that part of governmental obligations are fulfilled, then you can shift to the corresponding duties of citizens to play their own part, which is to maintain the infrastructure that has been put up in their communities. So to the extent that the infrastructure is lacking, governmental presence is lacking, then there is a limit to which you can put the blame squarely on the shoulder of communities. So not a very pretty story this morning, but thank you very much, Victoria Zim um, Onyeri. Thank you for sharing with us, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you again, of course, on a follow-up to this uh, same uh, issue. Thank you for having me. The breakfast continues shortly after this break. Stay with us.